Hi, this is John Kanlopoulos here. We're in uh, Keratoconus uh, University or Keratoconus Grand Rounds. I want to share with you this very interesting case. This is a case of a gentleman who has had a cornea transplant in his left eye. It's been 20 years, a uh, very nice transplant. He has keratoconus in the right eye. He is in his 40s, late 40s. We can see he's starting to develop a cataract in the right eye. His lens, uh, interestingly enough, in the left eye that it has undergone the cornea transplant is not as bad. And this is obviously confirmed also on um, uh, the fundus examination. Uh, the other thing of interest here is to look at the endothelial cell count on the transplant. It reads over um, 900. Uh, the cells are pretty regular, some polymegathism, but there's no active cell loss here in my opinion. And this is uh, the other eye, the untouched keratoconic cornea, which obviously has over 3000 cells per square uh, millimeter. And this is expected. The cell loss, as we know, is uh, 10 to 20% during transplantation. And then uh, another uh, 5% per year for the first five years. So here's the keratoconic eye. And uh, this is the uh, obviously the thinning of the cornea centrally. Uh, there's epithelial remodeling in the peak of the cone, but there's not significant thickening around the cone, which tells us that the cone is probably not active. We do have comparisons from last year for this right eye. And we can see last year, uh, minimum thickness was 352. This year is 358. And we can see there's no significant change in the overall cornea thickness. Well, this is the um, OptiView uh, Avanti. And this is very important information because on Pentacam, uh, the actual right eye shows a curvature worsening of uh, a significant amount, about three diopters. So this is the patient image today with steepest cornea close to 57. And this is last year with steepest cornea at 54. So although on Pentacam, there appears to be a significant worsening with uh, three diopters of ectasia progression and more flattening superiorly, it is the anterior segment OCT that really uh, reaffirms that there's no significant change in this patient. As far as the keratoconus, he does not rub his eyes. So we're gonna follow this eye. The uh, left eye now that has the cornea transplant, again, we're very much interested here on the cornea thickness. It was 566, is 545. We're probably a little bit later in the day. Uh, actually, we're uh, earlier in the day. His earlier exam was at 7.30 p.m. and today's exam is at 2.08 p.m. Uh, so this is not related to, through diurnal cornea thickness variation. The epithelium appears naive. So this cornea appears to be very stable with good thickness. And the problem here, as we'll see in the comparison pentacam maps, is that he has significant almost uh, uh, 7.5 diopters of uh, with the rule astigmatism. And uh, if we look at the uh, pachymetry maps with the pentacam, this is not dependent on the graft host interface being thin uh, it usually thins inferiorly and thus resuturing there is the solution instead of a la laser vision correction. So we will stick with what we recommended the patient back then. Best uh, solution in my opinion for this patient was contact lens intolerant and is best corrected 2200 in that eye with spectacles is to undergo a PRK procedure. LASIK could be another option for those who like LASIK more. Uh, I would prefer to do a PRK here the amount of cylinder is quite um, high, so we may combine a plus cylinder cylindrical correction and a minus cylinder cylindrical correction in order to achieve the seven to eight doctor uh, stigmatic correction that needs to be done. Cornea thickness is pretty good. Our minimum is over 550, and the theo cell counts are relatively good. So uh, going back to this uh, very interesting patient who poses a uh, cornea, management issue. We're not doing a uh, CXL procedure here, despite of the fact that the uh, Pentacam maps show uh, some quote unquote worsening because the uh, anterior segment OCT uh, Avanti confirms there's no change. There's some cataract formation. So the solution this eye may be a toric intraocular lens. Again, we mentioned this is a patient who's intolerant to gas permeable or scleral contact lenses. So 
a torque interacting lens may be the best solution for his right eye. And the left eye has a beautiful graph, although it's been 20 years out. Um, and uh, we will recommend a PRK procedure to curb his high astigmatism and offer him uh, better visual rehabilitation. Hope you found this presentation interesting. Again, I will leave you with the anterior segment OCT maps. We've advocated for many years that this is the best way, more accurate way to evaluate keratoconic eyes because we can also include potential uh, epithelial changes and epithelial remodeling. This is John Canalopoulos signing out from our keratoconus rounds today. Thank you.